Good morning. These are your energy stories from the second week of November 2020. Apparently, there were some huge political events happening last week, but I wasn't paying attention because there was so much energy related stuff going on. It's really cool stories this week. EOS Energy signed a deal with developer Hecate for about a thousand megawatt hours of energy storage in New Mexico, Colorado, and Texas. So this is a zinc product that they have. Uh, EOS purports to have 5,000 cycles and a sweet spot of like three to eight hours versus typically for lithium ion about four hours. Their 5,000 cycles compares favorably with about 2,000 cycles for your nickel manganese chemistries and 3,000 to 3,500 for your lithium iron phosphate depending upon the specific chemistry and the manufacturer. So now they got these standalone battery projects as well as solar plus storage three gigawatts total in the pipeline and this may be an indication that there's a new player in town and a new chemistry it'll be really interesting to see how this rolls out going forward um, in different news last week and somewhat more political the uh, current administration replaced FERC chairman Neil Chatterjee with um, James Danley now Chatterjee was the one that was behind FERC order 2222 which essentially promulgates the capability of distributed resources to participate in wholesale power markets. Um, also, FERC had recently announced and signaled its intention uh, or openness to pricing carbon in wholesale markets. Both of these initiatives were opposed by Danley. And in fact, with respect to the carbon uh, pricing approach, he called that, quote, unnecessary and unwise. Chatterjee, uh, having been pushed out, will still remain on the commission probably through June of next year and said, I've been obviously out there promoting a conservative market-based approach to carbon mitigation and sending signals to the, that the commission's open to considering a carbon price. And perhaps that's what led to this, i.e. his ouster from the chairmanship. Uh, we can expect to see this being short term. The FERC will be reconstituted with new members pretty shortly, and then we'll see where it goes. But it probably continues to move forward with Order 2222, as well as hopefully some integration of carbon into markets in the years to come. And then big corporate news, a Dominion Energy's Q3 uh, investment call signaled that they're moving away from uh, natural gas pipelines. They're going to jettison that business completely, sold that off. Now they're focusing more on their offshore wind, the first of those projects over two gigawatts offshore. And their executive chairman, Tom Farrell, said these actions were consistent with, quote, an unwavering path towards net zero energy. Another big news, a French company, Engie, I pulled the plug on a $7 billion LNG import contract it had been negotiating with Houston's Next Decade Corporation. It's 30% owned, NG is, by the French government. And under some pressure from the government side, as well as uh, Les Amis du Père, the uh, Friends of the Earth, um, they basically decided that this contract would not have been consistent with their greenhouse gas uh, mitigation ambitions. Part of the issue here has to do with U.S. regulation of fugitive methane emissions, and the French felt that it wasn't stringent enough. So another one bites the dust there. Meanwhile, in Europe, nearly 10% of all vehicles sold in the last quarter had a plug in them. There were about 275,000 vehicles sold, and roughly 50% were plug-in hybrids, and 50% were pure electrics. So even though there's still a pretty strong subsidy, it's clear that the European market is willing and able to jump into an electric vehicle. We can see those sales likely to be increasing over the years to come. And then finally, speaking of electric vehicles, if you're going to steal a car, don't steal a Tesla and don't do it in Australia, especially if you're planning to tangle with Australian radio host Annabelle Brett. She had a notification on her app that her car um, had been stolen. The alarm notification came across the app. So she jumped into a friend's car. They were able to remotely track the vehicle and get up close to it. And then being the kind of person that she is, she decided that she, since she had the ability to slow the car down with her valet mode app, she decided she was going to, quote, also mess with it a bit. So I was able to put the windows down, beep the horn, and basically screw with them as they were driving it, she explained. So again, if you're going to steal a car, don't do it in don't steal a Tesla. Certainly don't do it in Australia and try and stay away from Ms. Brett. Well, that's the news for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again next week. Take care.